here are your notes for targets five through seven. So that seems like a lot, three targets. However, you're going to see that these are all really closely related. And we're going to be talking all about exponential functions and eventually getting to a place where we can graph and talk about some of the characteristics of their graph. So starting off, um, an exponential function, hopefully you guys have kind of picked up on this so far this unit, is anything that has a variable in the exponent. So we normally think about that as x in the exponent. So what we're going to talk about here in target 5 is we're going to talk about the difference in growth or decay when it comes to an exponential function. So growth would mean that your function is growing rapidly. Decay means it's going down or decaying rapidly. So those words actually match really well um, with what we think they would mean. So what's going to happen here in target 5 in order to determine from an equation if it's growth or decay, we're going to look at what we call the B value. And the B value is what's being raised to the exponent. So we're only concerned about that one number that's being raised to the exponent. I'm going to call B the base. And then um, that's going to tell us if we have growth or decay. So if B is greater than 1, it's growth. If B is in between 0 and 1, then it's going to be decay. So that's what we'll take a look at as we go through um, these first parts of the notes. So from an equation, the first thing we need to know is what's the B value, what's being raised to the exponent. So in this first equation, all we're worried about is that 2 thirds. We don't care about the 2. It's just what's being raised to the exponent. And then we have to decide if it's greater than 1 or if it's less or sorry, if it's in between 0 and 1. 2 thirds would be in between 0 and 1, which means this is decay. All right, looking at B. So again, B is whatever's being raised to the exponent, which is 4 in this case. 4 is bigger than 1, so this is an example of growth. On C, the B value, the base, is Three. That's what's being raised to the exponent. We ignore everything else. Since that's bigger than 1, this is an example of growth. On D, what's being raised to the exponent? The 4 is, so B is 4. So again, this is growth. Anytime B is bigger than 1, we're talking about a growth situation. On E, the B value is 2. So another growth. On F, the B value is 3 fourths. So this would be decay. That's a number that's in between 0 and 1. All right, I'm going to try to trick you here on G. So if you guys remember, when we talked about um, negative exponents in our previous unit, that means you take the reciprocal. So G can be rewritten as 2 thirds to the x, which is important because the b value is now 2 thirds, which means that this is decay. If you had forgotten to flip that and you looked at 3 over 2, 3 over 2 is actually growth, so that would change your answer completely. And then on h, the b value is 2, so that would be growth. So that's determining growth or decay based on an equation. And so now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to look at um, graphs, which I think is um, easier because you're just seeing if it's increasing or decreasing. So read the graph from the left to the right and see if it's going up or down. So on A, that graph is going down, so that would be decay. On B, the graph is going upwards from left to right, so that's growth. On C, it's also going upwards, so that's another case of growth. Down here at the bottom, D is increasing from left to right, so that's stick. Sorry, that's growth. My fault. On E, it's decreasing from left to right, which would be decay. And on F, it's increasing from left to right, so that's going to be growth. It's a little bit easier to do that from a graph than from an equation, um, but overall that's all you're doing on these um, target 5 problems is just telling us growth versus decay. 
Now, as we go on to the next two targets, target six and seven, I'm going to continue to use that information to help me graph these exponential functions. So the first thing that I'm looking at here on A is that the B value is uh, one half, just like I was looking at on the front, um, whatever's being raised to the exponent, which means this is a decay case. So when all is said and done, when I graph this, this should be going downwards. So there's a couple different ways that you can graph these functions. I'm going to highly suggest that you um, use tables like I'm going to show you just because uh, this is going to be helpful when we get to targets 9 and 10 if you do the tables. So the first thing you're going to do is think about the B value. So we're just going to focus on Y equals 1 half to the X. I know that's not the tape or the graph that we're actually doing. We're doing y equals one half to the x minus two plus one, but we're going to start here. We're going to make an x y chart, and because this is decay, we're going to start at zero and then do negative one, negative two, negative three. Whenever we have a decay, I'm going to do those negative numbers. Whenever we have growth, I'm going to do 0, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. And all I'm going to do is plug these in for x up here in this exponent. So 1 half to the 0 power is 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. 1 half to the negative first, that means you take the reciprocal, so it would be 2. 1 half to the negative second you would take the reciprocal and square it, which would be four, and you can use your calculator if you want to. One half to the negative third power means you would take the reciprocal and cube it. Two to the third power is eight. So that's our first table, we're not gonna graph it. Our second table is gonna deal with our shifts, our transformation. So your horizontal shift is up here in the exponent. And remember, it's always opposite. So we're gonna do x plus two. And the um, vertical shift is gonna do exactly what it says, and it's the number at the end. So we're gonna do y plus one. So from all those x values in my previous table, I'm just gonna add two. So that'd be two, one, zero, negative one. And for the y values, I'm going to add 1. So that would be 2, 3, 5, 9. These are the points that I'm going to end up plotting for this graph. So I have 2, 2. I have 1, 3, 0, 5, and negative 1, 9. Now, before I actually graph these um, and like connect them with a curve, I do need to think about one more um, characteristic of our graph, and that's a horizontal asymptote. So all exponential functions have a horizontal asymptote. It's going to be wherever that number is. So wherever your vertical shift is, it's going to be a horizontal line. I'm going to draw it as dotted because, remember, asymptotes are lines that are invisible that our graph gets really close to but never actually crosses or touches. And now that allows me to connect my points in a way that I can create that curve so it gets really close to the asymptote but never crosses or touches. One more thing I want to show you is, remember we said that this was decay at the beginning of the problem? Circling back to that, you can see it's decreasing from left to right, so it goes in line with what we thought. Before we move on to the next problem, I'm going to go ahead and talk about target 7, which is the domain range and horizontal asymptote. So when we talk about the domain of this problem, how far to the left and right does this graph go? It goes forever to the left, forever to the right. I use that symbol that means all real numbers. You can write that out or say negative to positive infinity. The range, it lives only above the horizontal asymptote. So the horizontal asymptote, that dotted line, is at 1 and it goes above one. So we say y is greater than not equal to, because it can't touch the asymptote. So we just say y is greater than one. And then the horizontal asymptote, we write that as the equation of a horizontal line. So we write y equals one. Again, referring to um, 
that dotted line. So these two will always look very similar. It's also going to match this last number in the equation. So those are patterns that will always be true. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move on to B. I'm just kind of restarting the process, but new numbers. So where I like to start is looking at what the base value is. What's being raised to the exponent? It's a 3, which means this is an example of growth. I'm going to approach this problem in a very similar way that I did on A. So I'm going to start with y equals 3 to the x. And I'm going to make a table for just that to start off with. So I'm going to start my x values at 0, but because this is growth, I'm going to use positive 1, positive 2. Alright, so 3 to the 0 power is 1, 3 to the first power is 3, 3 squared is 9. I didn't go any further with the x values because I knew 3 to the third would be 27, and that would um, go off the graph. The second table here is going to talk about the transformation. So remember the x's do the opposite of the exponent, so that would be x minus 2. And the y's are going to do exactly what it says at the end, which is y minus 1. So from that previous table, I'm going to subtract 2 from the x's, so that would give me negative 2, negative 1, and 0. And I'm going to subtract 1 from the y, so that would be 0, 2, and 8. And those are the points that I'm going to end up plotting on this graph. So I'm going to start with negative 2, 0. Negative 1, 2. And 0, 8. And before I connect those points, I do want to go ahead and put my um, horizontal asymptote on the graph, which is this last number. So it's at y equals negative 1. And then that allows me to create that nice curve in all the points. And again, notice it's going upward, so that does make sense that it would be growth that we said originally. I'll get some information about this graph. So the domain is going to go forever to the left and right, so all real numbers. The range, this graph only lives above that horizontal asymptote, so that would be y is greater than negative 1. And then that horizontal asymptote is at negative 1, so we say y equals negative 1. So the only difference between these two problems that we've done at the beginning, and now what we're getting to in with C and D, is C and D both have a multiplier out in front. So we're going to see how that will affect things. We're actually going to start off the same exact way we did. So as a reminder, I'm going to look at whether this is growth or decay. So B is 1 fourth, which means this is decay. And then I'm going to go ahead and create my first table. So I'm going to do Y equals 1 fourth to the X. So since this is decay, in my table I'm going to use negative numbers. So starting with 0 and then going to negative 1. And that's actually all that's going to fit on this graph. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. So 1 fourth to the 0 power is 1. 1 fourth to the negative first is 4. If I chose to do a negative 2, that would give me an output of 16, which is going to go off the graph. So that's why I left that off. My second table is the table I'm going to end up graphing. So that's talking about the transformation. Notice in the exponent, it's just an x, so we're not doing anything with x in the second table. It's just going to be x. For the y values, you're going to do two things. So we still have that y minus 4 that we're used to, but this is where the multiplier comes into play. So that number out in front, the negative 3, is a y multiplier. So it's actually negative 3y minus 4. So these x values are going to stay the same. And for the y values, I'm going to multiply by negative 3. So 1 times negative 3 is negative 3, minus 4 is negative 7. Doing that again with 4, negative 3 times 4 is negative 12, minus 4 is negative 16. So that one actually went off the graph. We only have one point on the graph. 
So we have 0, negative 7. And the other thing that we do know is that there is a horizontal asymptote at negative 4. So that gives us some information about this graph. And if you think about where that other point was that's off the graph at negative 1, negative 16, then that allows you to visualize that this graph must be coming up this way and going like that. So even though we had one point, we were able to use the second point and the horizontal asymptote to kind of guide us. The domain is still going to go forever to the left and right. But this graph is unique because this is actually under the horizontal asymptote as opposed to above in the previous problem. So this one's going to be y is less than negative 4. So be careful with that. And then the horizontal asymptote wasn't negative 4. All right, last problem here. Let me scroll down. There it goes. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Um, okay, so on this problem, the B value is 2, which means this is growth. So we're going to start with the equation y equals 2 to the x. And for the numbers, I'm going to start with 0 and then go into the positives because this is growth. So 2 to the 0 power is 1, 2 to the 1st is 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 to the 3rd is 8. And then our second table has our transformations. So we are going to go x minus 1. Remember, it's always the opposite of the exponent. This problem has a multiplier of 3, so it's 3y, and then that plus 3 at the end. So I'm going to start by subtracting 1 from each of the y, x values, sorry. And then for the y values, I'm going to uh, multiply by 3 first. So 3 times 1 is 3, plus 3 is 6. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3 is 9. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 3 is 15. So I can see that I've already gone off the graph, so I don't need to go any further. I'm going to plot the two points that fit on the graph, so negative 1, 6, and 0, 9. And I'm also going to include the horizontal asymptote at 3. And then remember, your graph gets really close to your horizontal asymptote, but never actually crosses or touches it, and then goes through your points. So looking at your information, the domain range and um, horizontal asymptote, the domain, it goes forever to the left and right. This graph is above the horizontal asymptote. So remember the horizontal asymptote is at 3, so y is greater than 3, and this would be y equals 3. So those are your notes over targets 5 through 7. Um, they do go together pretty nicely. And I will mention here that if you're having trouble with the tables or anything, please let your teacher know because we are going to circle back to these tables when it comes to targets 9 and 10.